Hi, thanks for tuning in to my official YouTube channel, Reverend Me Ling. I've been known by a few names, Reverend Me Ling, Reverend Susan Me Ling, Susan Me Ling, Lady Me Ling, Lady Dory Bell, so on and so forth. So I'm in uh, New Mexico on my way um, from, well technically at this point, I got to the Montana Vortex. Uh, after going to Washington State to pick up my two biggest pieces for my Medal of Honor art project. So, you know, picked those pieces up, went to the Montana Vortex after staying in Federal Way, Washington. And, uh, quick stop in Utah on my way. So now, after going through Colorado, that's the only state that I went through between, yeah, it was, oh, and Idaho, so it was, it was the path, so it was Washington State, Idaho for a little, little bit to go to Montana, then from Montana to Idaho to Utah, drop off the biggest uh, piece for my Medal of Honor art project thus far um, in Utah, uh, Price. And then um, went through Colorado, and now I am in New Mexico. And so, as I'm driving, get to see a whole bunch of stuff. Now, I thought about this years ago, you know, while on my Medal of Honor art project, specifically around 2015, 2016, 2017, and 2018. Now. I don't know how many people have done much research in a heavy duty detail outside of, you know, the Navy for the United States of America's Armed Forces, the Marine Corps, and the Coast Guard, and NOAA. Although I'm sure there are others, I'm sure there are a few private companies and other government organizations that may have looked at uh, the oceanography, you know, specifically the cartography of oceanography. Now, depending on whether you believe certain things or not, maybe there is somebody somewhere who could prove that at one point in time, the earth was covered water and or ice because ice is water by the way and if the entire earth hypothetically at some point in time was covered in water and or ice what would that mean is there a hypothetical reference in regards to certain texts of old so in that same way, maybe they have, maybe they haven't studied in regards to the spiritual and religious aspects in regards of if at some point in time there was a point where the entire earth was covered in water and or ice. So that being said, in reference to the cartography and oceanography, how, in comparison, does the land above the ocean or above sea level look compared to the different crevices and the like in the ocean? Probably there are certain similarities. For example, where on land there are mountains and mountain ranges. Hypothetically, there's underwater mountain ranges. Maybe there's, I mean, I know there are caves and caverns. I got my cavern scuba diving certification. So, you know, that also means there are underwater, for those who don't know, there are actually underwater rivers. There are underwater lakes. There are underwater streams because they go in a different current flow 
than the water above or around, depending on where it's at. So hypothetically speaking, certain references. When you look at someplace, so I am in New Mexico, however, the more well-known area for a larger region in ways that could be described of such would be in Arizona, right? There's a Grand Canyon, right? Whole bunch of really tall mountains. There's like a a balanced kind of erosion along the sides, hypothetically, that you could see like in certain regards a recession in water, right? And so there'd be certain similarities between the makeup in regards to cartography and inside of the oceanography area, right? And so, you know, with all of the mountain ranges that have been driving through, um, not just in New Mexico, but, you know, essentially when I have been driving from Washington State through Idaho to Montana and Utah and Colorado and New Mexico is considered the Rocky Mountain Range, correct? Rhetorical question, yes. Don't believe it's the Appalachian Mountains. I believe that's on the East Coast. So, in that regard, you could almost, if hypothetically there was a point in time where the entire Earth was covered in water and or ice, you could look at the continent of just the United States of America and consider how the middle America sections could be viewed between the two different main mountain ranges with the flatland area of an above the water view in certain references of a shorter area of the Mathias Abyss. So that way you can have an idea. Because it's not the only area in the globe of the Earth that has an abyss, right? There are a few. And so I would even guesstimate the ideal way to actually describe in certain regards the Marianas Trench would be more along the lines of the Grand Canyon for a shorter version in you know, regards to depth, correct? For those who need a uh, visual, go look at that, right? I mean, depending on the width as well, not just the length, right? And so, you know, I know two thirds of a pond, fine. Uh, especially with scuba diving, nonetheless. In regards to the aspects of mountains, so I'm in New Mexico at this point in time, and I am on road or route 550 south. And there are 30 miles to 25 south, highway 25 south, for those who would be able to figure out where I am. And so the mountain ranges in the vicinity that I'm driving, for those who have the ability to go from where the roadway is to the top of the mountain, like off to the left, could be the equivalent of just the home for the Vandenberg, right? Not forgetting the fact that I had landed deeper in the ocean than where the Vandenberg is. So that gives an example, right? For those who need visuals to understand the depths that I had scuba dove in reference to the Vandenberg 
when I landed in the Mafia's abyss on a different level than where the Vandenberg is. So if you need an understanding in regards to that visual, then you could take in comparison one of the mountains on either side and then that top area being where the Vandenberg is sitting in comparison for a visual and then deep in the valley where the gullies are, that would be where one of the shelves would be and then the next one down would be where the ships that I took the pictures of are at when I landed at the bottom of the ocean with scuba diving in August of 2009 so that you have a better visual understanding. If that helps. So here I'll turn the camera around. There you go. So the very tippity tippity top of those mountains up there, that would be the equivalent of where the Vandenberg would be sitting in a much smaller scale because obviously the ocean is deeper than that. So, down where, you know, there's flat land, which doesn't technically give the best, you know, in regards, but it gives enough of a scale example. That would be one of the shelves and then you'd have another level of shelves to go before getting to where I landed. When I went scuba diving in August of 2009 at the Vandenberg. Does that make more sense? Does that assist? Whoops. Drop that. Um, does that assist for those who needed a visual for a better understanding in regards to how deep in the ocean? because that's only just where the Vandenberg would be sitting. You gotta remember, then you got the height of the Vandenberg from the keel to the hull to the deck to the tippity tippity top of the most tower point. And then you have all of that extra ocean between the top portion of the tower of the Vandenberg all the way to the top of the surface of the ocean. Right? Correct. So, hopefully that quick little lesson explains in a minute way of how deep in the ocean I was when I went to the Vandenberg in August of 2009. As another example, you can look at desert terrain, right? And that picture that I took of the floor of the bottom of the ocean, you could take in the reference of desert terrain where there's cracks and stuff. That would give you a similar view just in a different color right for understanding it's very similar in that regard when you think about how that looks yes and so while I know that there have been individuals who have not wanted to accept that reality. What is the saying? A picture is worth a thousand words, right? At minimum. So, just saying. Obviously I survived, right? Yes, 
Jesus, I do. Today is the 14th of June, 2020. It's been just under 11 years since surfacing from that scuba dive. Now, you gotta also take into consideration that I also landed at the bottom of the ocean when I went scuba diving in Cozumel. Now, the other scuba divers I was with, they did not land at the bottom of the ocean. They were several feet above me. I just happened to be Henri and had to do it. I just had to touch my fin and foot. I mean, my foot being in my fin, but yeah, the heel to be specific of my bottom of the ocean in Cozumel. So Cozumel, when landing at the bottom of the ocean there, so those individuals who understand that Cozumel is an There's ocean. A speed trap ahead. Cozumel is an island, correct? And so with Cozumel being an island, the actual aspect in a smaller way would actually be the mountains that I showed you because the top of those mountains would be the equivalent of the top of those islands and the gullies being what is essentially left of the continental shelf for those regions that have the island aspect. And so, you know, just saying. So, these are shorter mountains that I'm passing through right now. But, giving again a reference point, and obviously, islands depending on, have a larger area of flatland at the top, depending on the size of the ocean. But you can take that as an example in reference to on land for a visual. So if you, hold on, I'll take it on there. So got that mountain range off to the side over there. See that flat level on top? There's a gully in between the taller mountains and then the ones closer to where I'm at. And you could see that that would mean a smaller version because yes, in the ocean, it is much deeper, obviously, than on land. So, you know, while the scuba divers I was scuba diving with in Cozumel were several feet above where I landed. Because I am the way I am, I'm Henri. Um, that does not deny the fact of where I landed when it came and comes to the Vandenberg. Which obviously is much deeper than landing at the bottom of the ocean when scuba diving in Cozumel. Now, here's the kicker. The first deepest dive would be when I went to the Vandenberg. That would be the deepest scuba dive, obviously. The second deepest scuba dive would be when leaving from Boca Raton. That would be the second deepest. And that would have been with the professional underwater photographer. Where that individual and I, the male and I, had landed at the bottom of the ocean. And then the third deepest would be in reference to Cozumel. However, Cozumel, only I landed at the bottom. Everybody else hovered above. 
in reference to the Boca Raton dive, the other scuba diver and I, for the most part, were at the same-ish level, but I still had to touch my foot to the bottom of the ocean because of how I am. And, you know, then there's the Vandenberg, the, the deepest dive which I had an assigned scuba dive buddy. Um, however, he couldn't clear his ears to uh, descend with me, to be able to ascend for the first scuba dive. However, after the surface interval, um, he and I had gone to 60 ATMs together. Atmospheric measurements, so 60 times 33 times 3 to get the feet aspect. I hope this particular official YouTube video of mine assists to explain a little bit better in conjunction with video. So that way you could have some visual examples, not necessarily to scale them. Hopefully that helps. Comment, like, share, and subscribe to my official YouTube channel. You guys have a good one.